Good morning, folks. We are back at Debolt Machine with Mr. Paul Debolt. We really appreciate him taking the time to help us walk through a continuation of the last video we did uh, where we were cutting various different, I believe it was steel, we'll have a card to that video here, um, including the very free machining 12L14. Today, let's start by diving into some stainlesses, some 303 and 304. And you were saying that 303 is actually similar to 12L? Yeah, you know, it's a pre-cutting stainless, which, uh, you know, if you want to get something that cuts easy, 303 will do it. Okay. But it's, it's not very tough. 304 very... is directly, diametrically opposed <laughs> to that. Not only is it corrosion resistant, but man, it's, it's it can be hard to cut. Hard to cut, cool. So should we start with the 303? Yeah, let's up? cut with the 303 and everybody will get comfortable with that. <laughs> when they go to the 304, they'll say, this is like a different world. So we're gonna actually switch it up today too. In the past few videos we've filmed on Paul's larger machine, which you said is a 20 inch swing. Yeah, 20 inch swing, 10 horsepower spindle. Okay. Uh, a lot heavier machine. This is a heavy machine for a 1440. It's a 14 inch lathe, so it'll swing a 14 inch diameter part and it'll swing 40 inches between centers? Yeah, Okay. and it's, it's five horse. Five horse, okay, so, but the nice thing is that this is a lot more likely to be a home shop or garage shop or small shop machine. Yeah, if, if, if I was gonna buy a machine and starting out, I know a lot of guys start out with Atlas or Craftsman or something really tiny and, and easy to wire up because you can put it in a single phase yep. setup. This is a three phase machine, everything in here is of course, but. I would, you know, my from my experience, and this is looking backwards, I've been in the business for a while, I would, and the smallest lathe I'd get is that size. 14 inch. You know, mm -hmm. Not necessarily 40 inches between center, you could get along with a shorter machine most of the time. Most people don't turn much long stuff. Um, do you use it as a chucker most of the time? or do Most you, of the time, I yeah. would say, you know, 80% of what you do is not between centers. Right. Uh, or if it is, it's short. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and this is an exceptionally heavy machine for a 14-inch. Okay. But, you know, I would, that's where I would start is a 14-inch. You, you generally get a lot of speed, and that's what you need because you're cutting small stuff. The right. smaller it is, the faster you got to go. Uh, and you can cut larger stuff. Most of the time, it's you, you suffer more on the low end, which means larger parts than you do on the smaller parts. Right. But most guys don't won't do my, very much big stuff. And you're just going to have to work slower when you do big work. Well, that's what impressed me too. Is Paul said, "Hey, John, you want to film it on the the, the small the small lathe?" And I sort of said, "Wait a minute, here. You really going to turn these large diameter parts? You know, this is something. You know, card here to the video where we struggled turning some five or six inch steel because you've got to have the slower RPMs to run at the right surface footage." but also still have the the meat, the back end and the lay, the horsepower to yeah, turn that yeah. part. And you've got a lot of torque out there, six yeah. inches to run a yeah, tool. Yeah, this, this is a good sized part for this machine. You really don't, if you're cutting parts on a regular basis, I wouldn't go much over six inch. Yeah. I mean, you can cut 14, obviously it's made to cut 14. But you know, it, it, it uh, uh, doesn't do that as efficiently as a 20 inch lay. Sure. You know, you, you can take real heavy cuts with a 20 inch lay. This machine, you can't. But if you're, you're making something that's uh, precision or it's a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. using all that horsepower, and it, don't get me wrong, that white lathe is not that hard to run. When you run a smaller machine, it's not as, as, it's not as much work. You know what I mean? You mean on you yes, as right. the operator. As, yeah, as the operator. across. It's easier to work. And, and when you're doing small parts, it's hard to do it on a big machine and, yeah. and, and uh, move everything around and, and try to be precise on a big machine. It can be done, but... If you run a small lathe, you go, gee, this is this is so nice. much easier to run on a smaller machine. What's yeah. the max? Sorry. Ahead. So you know, you, and obviously you can't take as heavy a cuts, but that's something I think we need to demonstrate so we can right. see that hey, we can push it a little bit if we have to. If you're in a hurry or something like that, or you want to get some metal off there, but by the same light, it, you know, it, it's a little more user friendly. Yeah. What's the brand and what's the max RPM? Uh, this is an 1800 RPM is a maximum. Okay. This is a Takisawa. Takisawa. So it's Japanese or Taiwanese? Yeah, Japanese. Okay. Yeah, they it. still build machines today. I mean, their machines are expensive. Yeah. Uh, um, they build a hybrid machines with a control on there that's kind of just added onto a manual lathe. I know people oh. see those. Like a, oh, like a CNC, like a tool room CNC yeah, type machine? Yes, right. And they huh. also build CNC machines okay. too. But, uh, uh, their tool room lays uh, this machine. I bought this machine new in 1981. Wow! So I've had this thing for many years now, uh, and I'm glad I did at the time. I, I mean, it's uh, 
held up all that time. I mean, still in really good shape. Of course, uh, anybody will tell you if one guy runs a machine all the time, it's, right. it gets a lot better care than you got multiple people running machines. Sure. And that's typical of any factory. They, they, they get abused a lot. Right. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's held up really well. I mean, you can still find them just like this one on eBay or someplace like okay. that. Pretty, pretty reasonably priced, I think. Uh, probably would need scraped or something like that. I mean, this one has the uh, double nut system on the cross slide, so you can adjust. Oh, the preload. Interesting. Here. Yeah, there's a taper in here, and it moves the nuts apart sure. like this and tightens it up, so it constantly stays tight. Now, you can get more in one spot. Right. But, uh, this one hasn't suffered from that, probably because, uh, like, once again, I want you. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, too, the, the cross slide is real long. Yep. And, you know, even when you got backed up all the way, you can see the ways are still covered up. So well, that's that a preserves, huge part. Yeah, it preserves it a lot. First up, we are using a Sandvik DCMT insert. It's their GC30 grade. The insert box gives us some starting recipes for P, which is steel, M, which is stainless steel, and K, which would be cast iron. First cut is 491 surface feet per minute, five thousandths of an inch feed per rev, and 50 thou radial depth of cut. So nothing wrong with this cut, but Paul's concern was that the chips are literally shooting off of there. It makes it really difficult, uh, uncomfortable, and maybe unsafe to be standing near the machine while it's cutting. It's uh, chipping it up all right, but we can slow it down a little bit. It's breaking the chip, but it's jumping the chips around, so it's hard to stay close to the part. Let's drop down that surface footage to 353. That's about 270 RPM. Cut number two. The chip control, being able to stand near the part. Yeah, you can see that it's chipping just fine. Chips are regular. This is the easy stuff, too. Yeah, huh? that's right. See how it's chipping there, and that's... This is cut up. number three. We're still at 353 surface feet per minute, but we're transitioning from a 50 thousandths of an inch to a 0.1 inch radial depth of cut, and we can see the chip actually has more weight, which changes how it comes off the insert. We are getting a little bit of chatter, so let's combat that by dropping the surface footage down. Dropping the surface footage down from 353 to 216, same 5 thousandths of an inch feed per rev and the same 0.1 inch radial depth of cut. I noticed that they were really tight C chips, and what Paul was mentioning was oftentimes that means we're feeding relatively fast, so the feed per rev is relatively high relative to our surface speed. So we're turning relatively slow right now. Some takeaways from those first four cuts. Number one is keep a reasonable depth of cut. We wanna let that tool cut deep enough to activate the chip breaker and we paid for that carbide. So let's wear out more of it evenly rather than just wearing out the tip. But to make sure we balance that depth of cut with a successful recipe, we can adjust our, in this case, really just the surface feet per minute. We kept our feet per rev the same. Let's see if we can take an even deeper depth of cut. So this is cut number five. I'm referencing these cuts as numbers because over on the NYC CNC website, we've got this Excel sheet that highlights every cut we took by number so that you can download this and go through it yourself to figure out how is this useful and helpful for your shop. So with a deeper depth of cut, even if it's the exact same material removal rate as going faster with a lighter depth of cut, I would argue that it's better to take the deeper depth of cut because you're using more of that carbide that you paid for. This material makes a nice, the mice sees even at that depth of cut. Yeah, real nice chip, huh? Yeah. Boy, there. Well, let's get the seriously just we'll tell us anything. But and you see, you can put your hand on here. It's not anywhere near so the part is reading about 80 degrees, but that chip pile, 294, 3, 380, 370, and then again, go back to the part, 80 degrees, proof in the pudding, that's actually kind of nice. Feels just nice and warm, yeah. like comfortable, yeah. and I ain't getting close to that. Yeah, you can get this, uh, you can move a lot of metal if you're moving at the right speeds, Yeah, because uh, it's transferring all the heat to the chips, is what you want to do. Now yep. you see these are not blue, but stainless takes a little more heat to get start to change color. So it will turn blue, but you just gotta run yeah. even harder. Got it. Yeah. Now, cut number six, same surface footage of 216. 
same radial depth of cut of 0.1 inch. The difference is we're doubling our feed per rev from 5 thousandths of an inch to 10 thousandths of an inch. What Paul was noticing here was it's a really tight chip, and that can actually strain the insert and shorten your overall tool life. So it was working, but probably a little bit past the point of efficiency. So now we're going to switch to, you said these are negatives? Yes, that's right. So it's a Sumitomo. Yeah. Um, it is a DNMG 432 EME. So 432, so it's a bigger IC, bigger insert to begin with. Yeah, that's right. The main reason that I, yeah, I have these is a bigger insert because I, the little ones we just use, I use them over here for real fine cutting on the CNC machine okay. because there's a lot less cutting pressure. Yep. Uh, these, of course, are negatives and they make a lot more. Yep, so that's see, you see, literally see that downward angle of that makes it a negative. And as you mentioned earlier, with the negative insert, not only do you have two sides, so double your cutting edges, but you, but you've got this really strong overarm clamp that increases the holding power of the insert in the tool holder. That's right. That's right. And of course, this one's made for roughing. If you were looking at the insert box, there it has the. R in the box there, which means roughing, and then they have medium, and then they have finish, which we oh, it have literally now. says rough. Okay. Yeah. See, and then it's got the interim. And we went over this yep. last time you were here, where it's got interrupted and severe interrupted, and just a little, a little bit interrupted. Rough. Yep. And of course, they've got the material circled on here, which is as capable of cutting. Of course, you can cut anything with it, but that doesn't mean it's going to do it most effectively. <laughs> right. Right. Cut number seven. 491 service feet per minute, 5 thousandths of an inch feet per rev, 0.1 inch radial depth of cut. Totally different sound, Paul. Yeah, yeah, you really can hear sounded. it pulling the machine, and you see it's making a pretty decent finish in there. Uh-huh. What do you make of those lines, though, in that? Uh, so you see the striping or tearing? Yeah, well, uh, that well, uh, you're not too concerned about with, with the uh, roughing First, cut. Okay. That's okay. Uh, you'll be concerned about it if you were trying to get a finished cut. Sure. But typically what you want to do is anything you're working on is rough it in within 30. Rough it in within 30 thou. Yeah, okay. and that's in essence what CNC machines do. They'll rough in within 30 and then come back with a finished Different tool. Different Just enough to carry the rough finishing inserts that we were Exactly, working. right. Okay. okay. So then we can, we can stage this down a little bit. It'll be a little bit less... Uh, Won't be so bouncy. Cut number eight, same recipe, except reducing the surface footage from 491 down to 353, about 270 RPMs. Doing that before, and you go, well, I slowed it down. Yeah, well, why it needs a little bit, uh, it needs a certain amount of contact or force to make it not chatter. So part of the reason you're chattering there so is So it's like, I'm not enough. feeding quite fast enough to keep it from chattering. Cut number nine. So as Paul mentioned, we've got to feed it faster, so we're gonna jump up from five thousandths of an inch feed per rev to twenty thousandths of an inch feed per rev. Is that the same depth of cut? hundred? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if we um, back it back down and go over here and take the two hundred. Cut number ten. We're dropping the feed per rev in half. So we're going from twenty thousandths of an inch feed per rev down to ten thousandths of an inch feed per rev, but. We're doubling the depth of cut from 0.1 inches to 0.2 inches, so it's actually the same material removal rate. A little bit too much for the leg. Yep. So it's not quite, you know, that's five horse pulling 200 on the side. So you, that's uh, a number four insert. Yeah. So that's almost. Now, as we get smaller, you can push it harsher. Yeah, a little bit more, but that's about the maximum this five horse will pull. Okay. Cut number 11, switching from the Sumitomo rougher to the Sumitomo finishing end mill. Looks totally different. It's actually still a DNMG 430 insert, but instead of a number two 432, it's a 431. Starting off at 733 surface feet per minute, so quite a bit higher, five thousandths of an inch feed per rev, only 30 thou depth of cut. You see it's breaking the tips up really nice. If you look at it real close, you can see that real tight curl in there. Oh, right out, the, yeah. Yeah, right out on the tip. And that's what makes it break. So cut number 12, we're dropping down to one thousandth of an inch radial depth of cut. This is that situation where you need to hit your tolerance. You tried to, but you may have missed it. So we're going to take a very, very light cut. And what Paul's talking about, or sometimes we're just burnishing or moving material around.
Now this one, it doesn't work well in the CNC machine. Uh, well, it's, it's loading it of the insert. On these machines here, for one thing, you got coolant on there, which you don't have here. But typically what we'll do, if we have it here, is we'll run it even faster. Let's see. Hold on one second. So Paul's saying that um, you, it's easier to do this in a manual, a little bit trickier in the CNC machine to take those real light cuts. Yeah, if you're, if you're trying to hit size and try to get the first part right every time on a CNC machine, what you want to do is back the tool offsets, your, your 30 thousandths. Mm -hmm. So it's 30 thousandths under size, and then when you go, go back it. through and recut on a finished cut, you've got the, the normal size cut, so it'll react the same when you run the program. Mm -hmm. If you're running a manual machine, you're not always hitting size. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. It's not as consistent sure. as CNC machines. Mm -hmm. So once in a while, you'll have to recut. Yeah. Or yeah. Is, if this recut, it might not be cutting at all. It's just pushing the metal it's around. It's just pushing that, just almost burnishing. Yeah, right. that's right. And you know, you can afford to burnish. That's a little... Little. Same one thousandth of an inch depth of cut, bumping up the RPMs to one thousand. That's thirteen hundred and nine surface feet per minute. Again, we're talking about this idea of whisper cuts or spring passes or burnishing the material. And all it's doing is moving metal around. So if you're trying to cut something extremely accurate, you can you can push it around like that and get the the. Uh, uh, get your size yeah. and take tiny cuts with a manual mm -hmm. machine. Yeah, better finish there. Yeah, and it's a little fuzzy, but that's yeah. be, that's from uh, pushing the metal around instead of actually cutting. cutting it. Interesting. So you can get tiny cuts. Now, cast iron doesn't react that way. Of course, it's brittle. Right. But you can uh, jack the RPM up and burn it, is what we used to call it. Burn it. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, get, get sizes to come in that way. Yeah, by increasing your surface speed mm -hmm. or speed. I'm mm -hmm. sure I got to be careful how to differentiate between feed and speed. Sure. Don't you don't have to mess with the feed much. You just have to increase the speed and get the heat. Yeah. To move it around without cutting. Interesting. All right, folks. Goodbye, 303. There you've got it. 13 different cuts in the relatively easy free machining 303 stainless. Let's take a stab now at some 304 stainless, which is notorious for being much harder to cut and is a much harder, stronger material. First cut in 304 stainless, we're using that same Sumitomo roughing insert, the DNMG 432 that we used on the 303 a minute ago. Starting recipe is 424 surface feet per minute, about 270 RPMs, 5 thousandths of an inch feet per rev, 0.1 inch depth of cut. And it's worth noting here, part of what we're doing is truing up this stock. But you can see it's not doing a good job of breaking the chip. Cut number 15, let's try to break those chips by doubling our feet per rev, going from 5 thousandths of an inch up to 10 thousandths of an inch feet per rev. Let's fix that chatter by dropping our RPMs down to 155 or about 243 surface feet per minute. So this cut doesn't sound very good on camera, but Paul actually really liked it and it's actually a really nice chip. Good news is we're breaking the chip, bad news is a small amount of chatter. Cut number 17, we're gonna change things up, slowing down the feed per rev to five thousandths of an inch, but 0.2 inch radial depth of cut, or double the prior amount. Not good, chips are rolling over, but they're not breaking, and we're actually creating some pretty long bird's nests here. These can be really dangerous. Cut number 18, increasing the feed per rev to 10 thousandths of an inch to try to break those chips. Really too much for this machine. They're breaking, but you're getting multi-layered, multi-coiled snails, and that's too much. We want really C's or sixes. Switching back to that Sumitomo finishing end mill, 270 RPMs, or about 424 surface feet per minute, 5 thousandths of an inch feed per rev, 30 thou depth of cut. We want to take a look at what this 304 looks like with a finishing insert. So four takeaways from what Paul and I were talking about. Number one, here in this specific example of cut number 19, we're able to break these chips because we've switched from a roughing insert over to a finishing insert that's got a smaller nose radius and it's got a finishing edge breaker that's going to let us take those smaller depths of cut, hit our diameter, but still break the chips, avoid those bird's nests. Number two, it's actually easier to get 
better finishes with harder materials. They actually cut nicer, even though they take a little bit more horsepower. Number three, if you have the ability to use coolant, it's going to help even further improve your finish. Obviously that's easier in enclosed machines like CNC machines and turning centers, a little bit more difficult here when we're filming on an open machine. And number four, talk to your insert vendor about different grades of carbide and inserts. When we started off today with a roughing insert, there's an in-between. A lot of companies have a medium rougher that may be great for smaller lathes or smaller machine tools. Cut number 20, going all the way back to the beginning, that Sandvik DCMT insert, 424 surface feet per minute, 5 thousandths of an inch feet per rev, 0.1 inch radial depth of cut. And you can hear Paul mentioning it just sounds easier, it sounds freer, the machine's able to cut it easier. And that goes back to what we just said, which is that it's amazing that different inserts can actually let your machine cut better, even at the same recipe. So that's what gets me excited about the ability to learn this stuff, talk to other machinists, talk to folks that you know that may be in the know on this, or even just talk to your tooling vendor about how to make the most of the equipment you've got. Paul was saying that the chips are just a tad too open for his preference here. So the next cut, cut 21, we're gonna double that feed per rev to 10 thousandths of an inch and see if that tightened them up. That's doing the trick, it's tightening them up, but we're getting a little bit of chatter. We don't like chatter, so we'll drop that surface footage down for the last cut, cut number 22, 155 RPM or 243 surface feet per minute. Again, the same 10 thousandths feed per rev, 0.1 inch depth of cut. And this really was a great way to end it. No chatter, the chips look good, and they're even turning a hair brown, which means we're doing a good job of dumping the heat into that chip. Folks, thanks for watching, and thanks again to Paul uh, for taking the time to show us some speeds and feeds. It's always awesome and helpful to have somebody who can really walk you through, who has a lot of experience. Uh, Paul has a website and a store where he shows off the model engines that he makes, as well as some machine shop tools. So again, yeah. Paul, thanks for having us. Not a problem. Appreciate Anytime. It.